Welcome everyone to the 3.22 Trial of the Ancestors Death's Oath Build Guide. This is also a little bit of a video to update everyone on how the build has been going for me this current league as this was my league starter. So first of all, I want to say that Death's Oath is one of the most easiest and fun uh, clearing builds in the game according to me. Basically what it is is a uh, walking simulator build where you just walk around and everything explodes around you. And then for tankier mobs and for bosses you use caustic arrow and then you just run around the boss so he can't hit you and it's so easy and it's so much fun to play this build now i have been league starting with this build for the last couple of leagues and this league was no different i league started with it and i got to uh, maps in five or six hours i think with the leveling uh, guide that i have on the guide on the forum uh, and it was super easy and then I just transitioned into white maps super easy and then I got to uh, yellow maps very quickly as well and I transitioned into red maps without any hassle and with having pretty bad gear. I even got to tier 16 maps quite quickly and it was absolutely no problem as well and I even managed to kill a, um, a phoenix uh, boss even on my first day of actually getting to maps. So it has been really really strong and it has been a fantastic league starter for me once again. So basically, this build it excels at farming and can also be used for some endgame bossing. But I do not suggest in any way or form that you actually kill endgame bosses that are uber versions because the build will not be able to handle that. If you are a decently skilled player, you will be able to kill most endgame bosses with this build, but it is also not designed for endgame bosses. Remember, this is a clearing build. But I have killed every endgame boss in the game with this build except for the uber version so do keep that in mind. This build has a full extensive guide on the Path of Exile forum that is very easily explained exactly what you need to do from basically starting the game up to the point where you are doing endgame content. It has several sections, everything from leveling into stage 1, which is basically early maps, stage 2, which is basically middle or endgame maps, and stage 3, which is basically all endgame content that you actually want to do with this build. There is also stage 4, which is min-maxing this build and actually pushing it to the very limit and increasing your damage as much as you can but that is only for people who have a lot of money and time to invest into this build if you're just looking for the path of building for this build it can be found in both the guide on the forum but it can also be found in the description of this video and if you're looking for the current atlas skill tree that was used for this video you will be able to find that in the description of the video as well
When it comes to the gems in the build, I have all the gems that is according to the guide on the forum as well. In my bow, I have Vol Garo, and then Empower, Awaken Swift Affliction, Awaken Vicious Projectiles, Concentrator Effect, and Void Manipulation. This is supposed to be an Awaken Void Manipulation, but I just haven't bothered actually getting that right now. In the helmet, Malevolence Enlighten uh, level 2. It will be level 3 soon, which makes it 5 because of the helmet. Then Grace and then Determination. Despair, Blasphemy in the gloves alongside with Withering Step and Defiance Banner. In the boots, I got Dash, Second Wind and Steel Skin and Life Tap support as well. And I trigger Life Tap by left clicking uh, and therefore uh, activating Steel Skin, which then triggers the Life Tap buff so we can actually use the Life Tap buff that is in the armor. And of course, in the armor, I have Awaken, Void Manipulation, Efficiency. Awaken Swift Affliction, Life Tap, Less Duration, and Awaken Increased Area of Effect support. And for the people that wonder why do you have Withering Step? Well, we use Withering Step when we are next to bosses or any tankier mobs in order to increase the amount of Wither Stacks that they have faster. Because of our Ascendancy, sorry that's the wrong button, because of our Ascendancy, Withering Presence, every second we inflict Withered on nearby enemies for up to 15 seconds. Wither applies 6% increased chaos damage taken and can be inflicted up to 15 times. But for us to have the max amount of uh, Wither on the enemy, we would need to wait 15 seconds, which is kind of long and annoying. So therefore you just use Withering Step to apply more Withering stacks faster and therefore deal more damage to single target enemies faster as well. When it comes to my current gear this league, I have most of the gear that is shown in the endgame mapping and bossing of the stage 3 section in the guide on the forum. I have the endgame bow that I crafted myself using my own video. I have the Asnes Gentle Touch Silk Gloves for clearing. I have a good pair of uh, movement speed, life and resist boots. I have a good Stygian Vice with strength, life and resist and I even was able to craft some damage here. I just have a Deathstone Astral Plate with the correct 6 socket colors. I also managed to get a Iolite ring here that I managed to use some essences for even more chaos damage. And this is due to the fact that I put so much resists on my quiver where I don't actually have a lot of more damage on my quiver. But it would be better for me to focus on more damage on the quiver as well and maybe swapping out the ring if I have to. But uh, this is what I went for with this league but you can still go with what is shown in the guide on the forum and it will be just as good because the damage that you have on the quiver is extremely high damage for Cossack Arrow for doing single targets. But this is the ring that I made myself by just buying an eye like ring, using some uh, quality on it for like the physical and chaos damage modifiers, and then I just use chaos damage uh, essences as well. And then from other ring I of course have the magic ring with all elemental resistances and then crafted life. And the uh, amulet, I of course have the Impresence Onyx amulet with the Despair has no reservation if causes an aura. And then I have Anointed Disciple of Slaughter. And for the hem helmet, I have the Rudis Veil Praetor Crown and I actually managed to get, get the Increased Despair Curse Effect quite cheap. In the uh, belt, I also just have a whatever jewel with some Dexterity, Life and some Resist as well. And for flasks, Quicksilver, Jade, Quartz and Granite. My jewels are as shown in the guide on the forum as well. Transcendent Mind here, I have the Glorious Vanity Timeless Jewel with Xibakwa here. And the big one is Lightning Rest, so this one doesn't give that much damage, but it instead gives me some more defenses. I then have the Inspired Learning over here. I have a large class jewel with Unholy Grace and Wicked Pal and two medium clusters with Brute for Potency and Flow of Life, and then I also have a small cluster jewel with Evil Eye. So enemies you curse take 6% increased damage, which is good extra damage for us because we always curse enemies with our Despair Aura. So in terms of gear, my character is basically finished. The only thing I could do is get a better quiver with some more damage, and I could also get a Watcher's Eye Jewel with Malevolence damage over time multiplier as well. But I feel my character is still very strong right now and I can do juiced tier 16 maps and I can also do most of the end game bosses that I actually want to kill. So I don't really feel like it's very necessary for me to do those things right now, but maybe later on I will actually do that. I have a bunch of money that I was able to farm with this build because this build farms very fast. 
So I still have a bunch of money that I can start investing into my next build right now as well. And I'm also going to try out a bunch of different farming strategies for this current build. And that's basically the end of the video. If you want more information on this Death's Oat build, then you can go check out the guide on the forum and the link for that will be in the description as well. And also want to give a big thank you to everyone who supported me throughout the years on Twitch and on YouTube. You have been a big part of me actually being able to make this build and keeping the build guide and everything up. So big thank you to all of you. And also if you're new here, remember to follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash burgerbrush. Also drop a like and subscription here on YouTube and that would greatly help me. And uh, that way I can keep making videos like this and other videos as well for other builds or just beginning videos here on YouTube. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.